Since Asad Saab's last presentation was such a hit, on popular demand, we would like to request him to come back on stage and talk a little bit about Strategy 2030. Thank you. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ab sab logo ne khana kha liya, so ne gathai. Um, so I've been asked to introduce uh, uh, the people who are going to talk about the strategy 2030. And uh, I just wanted to kind of take us all uh, through the memory lane because frankly, uh, the work on strategy 2030 really started many, many years back, uh, almost 10 years back. So um, in 2013, and I think it must have been after a GCC, uh, when people kind of started asking questions, because in 2014, we were going to reach our target of 1,000 schools. Uh, and this question started uh, propping up, that, okay, what, what after 1,000 schools? Uh, what do we plan to do? Oh. Um, and uh, frankly, we didn't know, because we hadn't really thought about it. Uh, as Asan Sab usually says that, you know, when we built primary schools, then we thought, okay, kids are going to grow up, so we need to have secondary schools as well. So that's when we started thinking about what is the next target. And I remember the first time the target was set, it was uh, that we should reach one million um, students. And then we said one million beneficiaries or one million lives. I mean, we need to have the right term as well. Um, and then somebody raised that number to 1.5. <laughs> then somebody else said, it's not ambitious enough. We need to raise it to 2 million. <laughs> Adnan, probably. <laughs> because there was all this talk about 10x and, you know, and the x itself kept on going up. So the 10x also became bigger and bigger. Um, so what we did was that we set up a strategic development unit. Uh, under Rahila's uh, guidance um, and it was tasked to look at the various options that may be available to us to extend our impact, to uh, deepen our impact. Um, but I think one of the things that was uh, probably very clear in our mind and maybe it's still pretty clear in our mind that we want to work for the less privileged of the society. So we did not want to create something which might be catering to the higher levels, uh, but we wanted to cater to the same community. And sometimes, you know, when our own kids, they, they go to grammar school or, or, you know, city school or some other school, but we don't realize that actually these schools just form maybe 1% uh, and are catering to just about 1% of the population. So more than 90, 95% of the schools in fact, the low-cost uh, private schools that are catering to the bulk of the population, and they usually range from between four, five hundred rupees to a thousand rupees school. Uh, and they are in communities where you don't have internet access, uh, you don't have infrastructure, and there are loads of other issues as well. So we tried to make sure that we would continue to serve the same communities. And in that, uh, within that, we kind of started experimenting as well. So one of the first things that we did was, uh, there was this idea of TCF in a box. And we said, look, we've learned so much about training. We've developed our own books. Uh, we have a wonderful system of uh, monitoring, evaluation. Maybe we can use the same tools for others as well. Uh, and um, as we do with everything, we started piloting stuff. So there was this TCF in a box concept, which we piloted. At the same time, um, another area that we'd been kind of thinking about, but really not wanting to go into, um, was partnering uh, with the public schooling system. And our own resistance to it has always been that maybe you can, you can impact it a bit, but what would be the level of the impact? Would we really be able to make a difference? There were other models that were already working in that, like care, has been uh, operating in that space for a very, very long time. And we felt that the impact was not big enough, was not strong enough. 
Um, did we want to get into that space? Would we be able to create an impact or not? We weren't sure. But um, we also then decided that, okay, this is a space that we should try uh, and see how things go. So uh, the areas that we chose for ourselves, they included a partnership uh, in a public-private partnership model, which Alhamdulillah today there are 350 schools, as I just mentioned, that with the Sindh government we have an MOU for 500 schools. Uh, Balochistan government has already approached us and we are in, in contact with them. Uh, we have very few schools in KP, but nevertheless, there is still a connection there. And in Punjab, we have over 250 schools that are operating under this model. Uh, and the potential to grow is, is huge here. Similarly, um, we have our books that we've developed over a period of time. Now, mashallah, we're also translating into Sindhi and all. Um, so there is this opportunity of having your books introduced in, in um, uh, the public schools, in the private schools, and that can also create a huge impact. The teacher training, um, the different models that are possible, you can train government teachers, you can um, train public, uh, private school teachers, um, you can do online training, and in fact we've chosen the online route for ourselves uh, in this area. Uh, and are piloting that. And um, so we, we decided that the, these were some of the areas that we were going, in, uh, we were going to go into. Uh, in terms of digital learning also, uh, our approach is that we are going to pilot it. Uh, obviously in a big manner, we have a laboratory of 280,000 students, but we are going to see what works because sometimes there's a lot of um, what is it, Riaz calls it the signal to noise ratio. Uh, there's a lot of talk about things, but is it really effective or not? If we have digital learning, is it making a difference or not? Um, so we've, we've partnered with a few people and we've tried out a few things and some things have worked and others have not. And we're very interested to know what works. Uh, we've in fact, many people probably don't even know and we've kept it under wraps perhaps, that there was a virtual college also that, uh, that we've introduced and are piloting with. So we see that can our students actually, um, other than our college itself, can we have a virtual college as well? Uh, I think the, the underlying uh, thing, and, and you know, when I, when I talk about TCF, I think that the biggest thing uh, that's important to us, and Alhamdulillah, because of which we are growing and, and doing Alhamdulillah well, is that it's not good. We are not going to uh, if we don't, if things don't work out, we'll be the first ones to say sorry they're not working out. Um, and it is because of this strength that we are piloting things, we are trying to see what works better, and whatever does, that is what inshallah ta'ala uh, we will take forward. Secondly, numbers, <coughs> they matter, but they don't matter in the same way as they matter to others. People say, it's a million, falana. It's very easy to, to let's say, have radio or, or TV or something and say that you've reached so many million people. But what impact have we created? Uh, and as far as the new programs are concerned, we are very conscious that we need to be focusing on impact and not just go with some number. Because, for example, if, you, if there's a private school, and a low-cost private school, and you introduce one book of yours, which has been developed after a lot of um, experiments and, and research, you can claim that you've reached whatever, 120 students or 150 students. Uh, you can also have five of your books introduced in the same schools and the same number, because the number of students is the same, 120 students. Uh, whether it's been taught well or not, that's another question. So as far as the new programs that we are thinking about and in, in our vision 2030, they're part of our uh, program and plan, we are very conscious that we need to focus on, on the impact. We need to figure out what the impact is. And then inshallah ta'ala, as we go along, we try to maximize the impact of these programs. So you can see behind me this, um, this slide, which is basically the the, finally, the, uh, uh, the Vision 2030 that was approved by the board, and it was in 2018 
that we basically finalized that these are the things that we are going to go into. Uh, and again, this is something that as we go along and as we work on the various aspects, which include the scaling of partnership program, uh, helping our alumni, uh, literacy and life skills programs, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, and uh, our team members are going to talk about these specific programs in just a minute. Uh, as we go along, we'd focus on seeing what the impact is, inshallah ta'ala, and trying to maximize the impact. So with these few words, I'd like to invite Rahila. She's supposed to take this program forward. Rahila. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Um, I'm very happy that lunch ke baad ka session hai, to umid hai ke tezi se guzar jayega. Bohat zada sochne ke kafiyat mein nahi hai hum sab, khana wana kha chuke hai. But an uh, important part of uh, the, the day, uh, partnership schools. Uh, before I start, just want to tell you that uh, this has three components very briefly. The footprint of partnership schools uh, today. Uh, then the portfolio we have at the moment, how we've been working with that, stabilizing it, and thirdly then, uh, from that stability that we have been able to gain, how to scale from there, basically. So that's how we'll go. Um, these are some numbers, as Saab mentioned. Uh, 350 units. 320 locations. At the moment, we have uh, close to 45,000 students studying in the partnership schools. 46% uh, of these are girls. Uh, we have a faculty and you can see uh, government staff also uh, in a small program, uh, a smaller, not a small program, in Sindh. Uh, we have a program where we are uh, working with the government teachers, which is a story for another day. Uh, and we have 15 areas uh, uh, that manages these 350 schools. Uh, so we'll talk about the, the portfolio first, uh, and I've picked Partnership uh, North because out of the 350, uh, the significant portfolio at the moment currently is uh, the North uh, portfolio. Uh, I want to briefly take you through uh, when we took these schools uh, with our own experiences of how operations are managed and how academics is done and what infrastructure looks like uh, versus what we actually went into experience and, and how we consolidated all that over the last five, six years. So with TCF operations, it's pretty simple. You would have an area, you would have a office, you would have a van, you would have this information, this data, this template, this form, this goes here and this goes there. Uh, and we thought it would be similar and we'll be able to do that. Uh, what really was most significant, and I've kept few things here, there were many, uh, was the fact that it was the first time that we had an interface with the government database. Uh, we collect student information, but we don't collect it in the kind of detail that the government wanted the kind of frequency the government wanted and the kind of documentation the government wanted. Uh, we encourage parents to have the documentation. We are more generous in giving them time to make their uh, pay forms, their birth certificates, and so on. Uh, the government simply does not allow. You, if you have to enter a student in the system, you have to admit a child in the school, you have to have all that information to be able to do that. And it was um, a nightmare, actually, to say so in the beginning, because uh, we were dealing with communities that, uh, where the parents didn't have their ID cards. Forget about the birth certificates. So it was a, it's a very, very uh, unique phase that we went into, and we realized uh, how to mobilize communities, collect data, send them to another offices, get their IDs made so they have their children's birth certificate mates and so on. Uh, and we had to also pr do profiling of our teachers. Um, there was an interesting uh, profiling that we initially used to do uh, monthly, but now we do quarterly and so on, which is a school profiling with um, 97 columns to fill, which is very, very strange. So. Uh, 
something which we thought would be easy because it would be an admission form and we will put the child in school uh, turned out to be a, um, an effort in itself. Uh, remoteness of the locations. So as an example, um, and I'll quote Asan Saab here, uh, when we were picking uh, districts and selecting districts, initially we had suggested Kasur and Shekhupura. And Narawal, we said it's a really, really tough district. We just have about five, six locations there, and uh, that also in the, towards the main city. And Asan Saab was like, but if we won't go there, no one else will. And he was so right, because no one else had applied for Narawal. We did. And, <laughs> and a, in a matter of two months, our locations went from five to 63 in Narawal. Uh, all very tough, all very remote, uh, and uh, we truly understood Dushwar uh, Guzar Ilakome, TCF, so uh, there was a lot of effort towards that uh, initially, uh, and after the initial effort, a little dip we had with COVID and everything, where everyone kind of went back in homes, but initially also, Attendance, which is never something that we consider an issue uh, as operations in a school, uh, but there with government schools existing, coexisting uh, with our schools in the vicinity, and they are operating the way they are operating, it was very difficult for parents to understand that we expect the child to be in school at 8 o'clock. And we expect the child to continue staying till 1 o'clock. Uh, uh, so, massive challenge uh, uh, there uh, and relationship with the government, the most interesting part. Um, the relationship with the, go with the government was a real learning experience for us. The, the way government works, the way they process data, the way the time they uh, take to do certain things and deliver on things, uh, how difficult in certain uh, aspects it is to actually get approvals, do things, um, all, all of it uh, is, a, is a massive challenge. So even to be able to create space uh, under a tent and cut two trees for children to sit comfortably, um, in certain cases it took, took us four months, five months to get that admission. Uh, get that permission from the district office to cut those two trees because they have the forest department to report to. And they are not very interested whether the children have a space to sit properly or not, even if it's under a tent. So, so this was very, very, very different. Uh, and we knew what we were getting into, but we really didn't know what we were getting into. When we got into it, we realized what we have gotten ourselves into. And uh, uh, operationally, uh, been a huge challenge. Uh, amazing regional and area teams that all, all of us, from the head office to the area to the region, learned together how to go about it. And today, alhamdulillah, uh, it's, it's a much better, uh, uh, from a relationship perspective, uh, the regard that TCF gets, the recognition that re uh, TCF gets from the authority, uh, the, the staff, the profiling, the quality of data, everything gets appreciated. And uh, the teams, mashallah, have come to a point where they have really stabilized. Uh, academic was a very interesting uh, story. So we knew what we are getting into because the uh, agreement said that we are required to use the textbook book, uh, book, book, books, the board books. Um, and we went to start using those and we had our own supplementary material with that. And then we started getting questions from the, the evaluators that come, the monitoring people that come, that why are we using our own books? And we said we are using them as supplementary material because there's a lot of gap in the, the books that exist. Uh, plus there aren't any uh, teacher materials that we uh, have become so used to for the last 10, 12 years in TCF that if there will be a book, there will be student material, there will be a teacher guide, there will be an entire pack thought through from end to end, and that's how it gets delivered and implemented. 
so that that was a real challenge and uh, then we decided that all right if we are using those books we are going to develop our own teacher guides and design team went into developing teacher guides and then the single national curriculum hit them really bad they had done 80% of the work and the single national curriculum in the federal territory in punjab changed and we realized that the books that we were developing our teacher guides on have changed and not only the books have changed uh, the language of instruction has changed so they have moved to english uh, and they had not no idea how they will implement it in the government system uh, but they were very eager that that's how we are going to go about uh, so again thanks to the design team uh, after a lot of uh, complain and crying they went back to work and they started working on materials and uh, things what we realized and learned and did was that we decided that we will work on more materials that are independent of those they are linked to curriculum but independent of the books so if these things keep on coming and going and changing at least basic literacy numeracy around schools continue to sustain and continue to go so so that's something that is really really good because we've been able to come out with a with a program of functional literacy and numeracy that has been uh, worked on at the moment the third thing uh, most interesting we had never in tcf experienced multi grade teaching we have mono grade schools ek school 6 kamre kachi se panchvi that's what a primary school is the government uh, not only has uh, uh, schools like that they have it in a in a extremely large number uh, and traditionally that's how they teach also so they have uh, primary schools by design that are two room schools where you have three classes happening in one room and three classes happening in one room two teachers assigned uh, interestingly they don't have a curriculum or books for that they don't have any training on that they don't have any assessment mechanism on that they just assume that one teacher with three grades in one room is going to teach the same way as a mono grade teacher would do and the teacher uh, the children would get the would be assessed the, in the same way also uh, and this is this is a big challenge for us because when we took over the schools despite of the fact that we surveyed and we selected and everything at the end of the day it was uh, the school education department the P ministry of punjab's decision who gets allocated how many schools and which schools uh, so out of the portfolio of uh, um, north uh, with uh, with about 270 plus schools over 90 schools are multi grade schools in our in our portfolio so you can imagine this is not a small problem with five six schools that can be managed uh, so again this was a this was a very interesting learning experience for tcf also because we went into research we went to find out how such schools are managed then the design team developed teacher guides for multi grade uh, that we piloted then we experimented um, and uh, uh, riyas kamlani is promoting those to punjab government to take up because they have lots of schools like that and i hope they do so at least uh, they have some some support those teachers have some support to teach the children they are teaching in in a better and efficient way yeah so infrastructure um, is a story that some of you have actually gone and seen also i was talking to uh, abdullah jafri sahab here and he said ke wo school abhi tak waise hi hai maine kaha nahi kuch behtar ho gaye to so these these were the the schools we got actually and this is how it looks now so i want to particularly talk about uh, uh, in a minute uh, for a minute or two the fcdo project this is the old defed renamed fcdo uh, this is a very unique feather in tcf scap because grantors uh, like usa or fcdos do not give construction related projects to uh, organizations that comes via government only we were the only organization 
FCDO actually gave the grant to, along with Punjab government, uh, to build school. Uh, Punjab government till date hasn't delivered on that project. We have been able to uh, uh, build 600 new rooms and 100 toilets in all those schools. And that also, Zaya proudly says, in eight months or seven months. So yes, so we've been able to sustain. But the question is, is this how we want to continue doing? Take up a project, do all these things again, have more variables added to it, and then kind of sustain and move on? Uh, Yes, in some cases we may be doing that, but this would seriously hamper scale if you want to go for scale uh, with public-private partnership. And we started thinking what are the challenges that we will continue facing. So we, government schools will have, and they do have, poor infrastructure. Uh, even today's budgets, the education budgets, are uh, significantly uh, uh, consumed in recurring cost, and there's hardly any development budget that is there. So, despite of government's intentions, they can neither build nor, uh, new schools nor they can upgrade or even uh, furnish and renovate the existing schools. Uh, they are in a really, really bad uh, condition. Uh, the, the other thing which is very important is that in the government uh, sector, in the public sector, 70% of the schools are primary. So, the question of secondary would always remain. In the morning, Asasab also showed that how we are also trying to make an effort to bridge that and how we plan to do that. The government doesn't have a plan or any means to do that. Uh, as an example, Punjab alone has about 52,000 government schools out of which 37 are primary, 37,000. So that's massive. Uh, and we will then continue struggling, and today we are. One of the struggles that PS North has today is that we do not have a secondary school for the two, uh, 73 schools that we have in the portfolio. Textbooks, material I talked about, public working with public teachers, no accountability, uh, that would remain a challenge if we go, because not every time we may come across a project that can come without the government teachers, they would come with government teachers. So we thought of a preferred model, uh, a model that could be a win-win, uh, and we worked on that, where we, as we now do, uh, get grantors and donors to fund our schools. Uh, we construct them, operate them, and we have the education foundations, which are the associate departments of education departments, to actually take up the operational cost. And we've been lucky with Sindh, surprisingly. A lot of people ask me, wasn't Punjab interested? Um, they are, but I think what we have found over time uh, for Sindh to be more flexible uh, for bespoke projects um, compared to, uh, uh, Sindh to be more flexible compared to Punjab. So we have uh, uh, done an agreement, uh, January 2020. That's a very interesting date because we did it on 9th Jan and everything closed down February 2020. So this, this project actually kind of took off later. So the, the key components of the agreement is that TCF uh, looks at the infrastructure, or rather construct, get land, construct the land, uh, get to use their own books and materials, which is a big thing uh, uh, for, for us to do. We have a management control over our staff, hiring, remuneration, training, and everything else. Financial sustainability comes through the government. They give an operational cost, and that also uh, adjusted and accounted for different grades. So this is a, this is a good thing with Synth, that instead of a flat single amount, realizing that senior grades need uh, better teachers and things like that, it's a more uh, uh, accounted for uh, uh, pro, uh, cost, uh, subsidy program they have. Uh, what they would do, apart from our own internal assessments and qual quality checks, the government annually does a sample of quality assurance of learning outcomes of the students, which is understandable and, and good for us as an external check. So this is the first school under foundation assisted school. Uh, we um, established it in Karachi and you can see that the, uh, 
the date is September 2019. The reason it to reach January 2020, it, it's, it took us 18 months, two SCF MDs and three education secretaries to be able to do that agreement. And But we were, we were very hopeful and we, uh, knew that we would be able to do that. Today we have 340 students enrolled and 61% of them are girls. So the uniqueness of this campus is it's two campus, it's two unit in the same campus, both primary and secondary. So the challenges uh, and the learnings that we have over uh, 27 years is something that when you not create a secondary unit, the transition is a challenge, then bringing the secondary school later on is a challenge. And for girls, if it's a distance, uh, it's, it's further demotivating and the, the chances of dropout is higher. As I said, we get to use our own materials, assessment systems and everything, which is great. And uh, the, the transition, particularly for female kids, are good. Uh, so network planning. I just want to take two minutes here. Uh, so what we have done from a network planning approach is that we have taken up a need-based network planning approach. So what we did was that we sat with this in the education department. We they government sit on lots of data and they were able to give us all that and they were data on public domain and we looked at uh, and ranked districts based on uh, how many primary to elementary schools exist, enrollment ratios, dropout, gender parity, out of school children and all that. So this is very amazing because now with the FAS we are not just going into places where uh, a person feels that a school should be there, but these are actually identified districts and identified places and a more focused approach and need-based approach. Uh, so this is what we plan to cover in terms of districts, about 10, 11 districts that we want to uh, have these 500 school units. So the the target is to have 500 school units and about 150k stu students studying in those. Uh, as of now, where we stand uh, with schools under construction also and some already running, 19 of those and with 40 coming, we hope to operationalize 59 schools by August 2023. And uh, we have been able to secure funding for 100 units already uh, and land for 90 units, including these 59. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rahila. I would now request Ms. Amna Khalid to come and talk about our programs that we have to develop communities. Thank you. Yeah. So I have told you that I have got 15 minutes to do this. And 15 minutes with 17 years of agahi, about 8-9 years of water and 6 years of vocational training is a bit of a challenge. Um, I would like to introduce Fezan Polani. He is the head of the community development unit. He is... Yeah, so uh, while I enjoy the executive advisor post, he's really the man on the ground who does all the work. Uh, Fezan is a bachelor's from LUMS and he is a master's from the University of uh, Birmingham in the UK in management, development management. Um, and uh, I'm so blessed because he has a love for data and he is, uh, pays attention to detail. So Alhamdulillah, thank you Fezan for all the work that you do. Acha ji. This is a picture of an Agahi Center. What's unique about Agahi, well, so Agahi is a TCF's uh, adult literacy program, it is non-formal. What's unique about it is that the, it, it costs only $15, less than actually $15 to take a person from being illiterate to teaching them how to read and write. Uh, and this has only been possible because it's a non-formal program running off of the formal structure of TCF. Our vision is a literate and well-informed community around our schools. And our mission is to provide access to literacy and life skills, enabling TCF community members to become aware, 
agahi and actively engaged with their environment. Two hours a day, 90 days, four kitabe hain, one dedicated teacher and a committed master trainer. It's life changing. At the end of the program, this is what the learners can do. And this is where we are. Wherever TCF schools are, there's an opportunity to run a, a, a Nagahi Center. So to date, we've established in 63 cities. Over 90% of our classes are held in the community. And at any one point in time, there are about 245 flagship and 35 partnership uh, locations where the classes are running. This has been our growth. So as of December, almost 160,000 learners to date, alhamdulillah. And almost 10,000 literacy centers that we've been learning. I'm going to take you through some pictures. So just before COVID hit, we had a grant uh, from Levi's Worker Wellbeing Program. And we ran, uh, this is a pilot, and it was, alhamdulillah, it was very challenging because of COVID, but it was a very good experience for us, where we ran literacy classes in the factory for artistic milliners. Sorry, it's just going. And this is Team Agahi. After all the hard work, this is how we paid off. This is the second program that we're running in the Community Development Unit. It's called Abe Rehmat. Our vision is healthy and green TCF school communities and communities. And we want to provide clean drinking water to communities in a sustainable manner at minimal cost. We set up, we conserve, and restore clean drinking water resources for TCF schools and communities. Basically, we have water plants, and I'll take you through. So, there are plants that have been set up at 30 TCF schools within the premises, and these are across Punjab, Sindh, and Balochistan. Uh, they physically are located within the schools for protection and maintenance purposes. Um, the water is for free of cost, two-thirds of the water plants are solar-powered, 30% are reverse osmosis RO, and at present, these plants are serving over 50,000 people a day. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> at each of these locations, there's a trained water plant operator working for eight to ten hours. That operator reports output daily on, via SMS, which gets logged into our online portal system. Then the program team, they review the data, and then they, we determine that data actually tells us where flow rate is where production is where the repair and maintenance needs to be done. It's a, the early indicator. Uh, then plant and uh, upgrades and repairs, they are done by another team of plant technicians, and those are actually operators that become plant technicians. And then our uh, program team conducts visits uh, periodically to each plant location for oversight. And then the, um, there's a formal testing of the water quality that's done by PCRWR. Yeah, and I'll stay down. So these are prototypes that we had developed in-house for the flood and then we dispatched them to the, to the different locations. And 
and this is team abir ahmed they are really amazing i mean in terms of jazba in terms of passion on the ground din raat alhamdulillah okay so this is the third program that we're doing it's skills training a vision poverty alleviation and social development in communities around our schools our mission is to enable community women around tcf schools to attain technical skills enabling them to earn a livelihood and support the family we teach women tailoring embroidery and entrepreneurship skills so that they can earn an income by working from home or as apprentices at our vocational centers the centers they take work orders including the stitching of tcf school uniforms so we are located in we have 15 centers vocational centers that are running in five different clusters uh, lahore kasur shekhupura uh, and this narwal is sitting there jadawala burewala sargoda khushab miawali pindi muzaffarabad and then karachi lasbela these are the different and we've done almost 2700 uh, trainees taken the girls that we've taken through this program This is team vocational. Thank you very much. I'll just take a second. Why is this is all very pretty and glossy and nice, but when you run a program of this size, I'm talking of agahi 170,000 trainees. What does happen and can happen in a program like this is that a inspection team. which included a manager and an assistant manager were inspecting an adult literacy center in the punjab and they inspected it from 6 to 9 pm because the vocational uh, the literacy center can run at odd times and when they left their place and were driving back to the highway the car met with an accident the manager died and the assistant manager had a vein ruptured in his leg so um, then there is behind the scenes management uh, is a caring organization so the the team manages the widow etc etc so uh, there is a lot happening behind the scenes to get to this place god bless you all thank you adit sir it's difficult work indeed and these programs are very important um, especially when we talk about agahi ad literacy um, in our context is very important and the first time i realized it was when i was in grade 4 perhaps and my house help very helplessly came to me with a letter in her hand and asked me to read it out to her and i was doing my homework and did not realize what she wanted and how important it was to her and i said baad mein aana please and she said please baad hi padh de i distinctly remember the helplessness in her eyes and the way she begged me to read the letter in fact that is what brought me to this field of work when i read out the letter it was a letter from her son who was working in another city cell phones weren't common back then and as i was reading the letter she started crying and I realized that particular day how important literacy was, uh, and in the spirit of literacy, I would now like to request Wajiha Bari to talk about our literacy and life skills program called Sojag. Um, I know everybody is um, zoned off a little bit after lunch, but I think let's just come back and be active because I'm going to share a secret which will actually have a significant impact on Pakistan's educational landscape. So Sorry Switch the mic <laughs> Okay So um before going into the program um I would just like to point out 
that we have 22.8 million out of school children. That's what the World Bank number is quoting as per 2021 survey. Just pause and imagine the sheer magnitude of the number. It's, it's beyond imaginable that there are 22.8 million children not studying in schools and out of those 80% have actually never been to schools. So what will he help them? Can the government build actually hundreds and thousands of schools in the next five years or 10 years? Most likely not. So the only scalable solution that is possible is an out of school program, an informal learning, community learning program, um, which will actually be catering to such a large population in the shorter term. Keeping this in mind, TCF has introduced Sujag, which is an out of school children program, targeted at the age of 8 to 16 years. Uh, Sujag is located in Raila was talking about hard to reach, but no, that's not hard to reach. <laughs> this is hard to reach. This, this, just imagine a community of 20 to 25 um, mud brick houses. I don't even want to call it houses. Yeah, mud brick temporary shelters um, where there is zero learning or zero access to op learning opportunities. Our team actually goes and then open up learning centers in these communities. This picture can probably tell you the remoteness of the location. So where are we right now? We have, uh, it's a Sindh centering program right now. We are operating in nine districts of Sindh. Uh, we have 192 centers and 4,600 plus learners. Our growth so far is quite impressive, even if I say so myself. But yeah, we started, a year back we started with 11 centers and 264 learners. Now we are um, at 192 centers as of October 2022, and we have 4,600 plus learners. So I'll quickly dive into the objectives of the program, and I will actually let the visuals speak here rather than saying anything more. The first objective of the program is experience the joy of learning. So this is a teacher. So this is yeah a Teachers Day celebration at the Sajak Center. Uh, we have a regular five to seven minutes morning exercise built in, which is either a yoga exercise or a morning exercise. So this is a typical Sajak classroom. So the second objective of the program is that we try to build greater connections with the community by learning with the community assets. So the content and the material is designed in a way that whatever is available within the community, we will be using that. For example, counting is taught by using pebbles. Uh, length is taught by using the branch of a tree. So this is us celebrating um, the cultures of Pakistan. So this is the synth day that we are celebrating. Then we're doing number tracing just when the student doesn't know how to hold a pen. So we're doing number tracing on sand, which is readily available within the community. This is a typical open space classroom. We don't have any infrastructure. Um, our classrooms are within the community. We don't have any infrastructure. A teacher can just teach within, the, within, within his own um, house or under a tree or under open space in the community. So this is a small video that I would like to share. Now this is, this is a hands-on activity that our students are doing to learn about the orbiting in the solar system. Play. So, they try, so the sen the, there's a sun in the center, if you can see the orange dupatta. That's the sun. And then they're learning about the orbiting. So the third objective of the program is to develop curiosity and connect with the country. Just like TCF Ethos, we celebrate Pakistan. We are proud of our country. Most of our centers, despite of the fact that they are located in minorities where the religion is other than Islam, but most of 100% of our centers are depicting the TCF ethos. So this is one of the video which I'll be just sharing. Um, Prabhula is one of our teacher. Look, uh, the center is located in a minority community where the school is actually 25 kilometers away, a government school. So the 
all, all these children that you see, they're not enrolled in school, but they're enrolled in a Sujak center. <laughs> This is one more picture of us celebrating the Independence Day. We have coloring activity, hands-on activity, um, every day designed within um, our classroom. The fourth objective of the program is to actually explore potential to take on broader roles both in the professional capacity and in the personal capacity. And over here I'm going to share a tug of war video between the girls and the boys, and the boys cheated. Please notice very carefully, the boys actually cheated. So, che please, take a note, okay? <laughs> uh, I don't see a video, sorry. <laughs> boys again cheated. <laughs> yeah. And now, so we challenge gender norms. We, we make sure that our boys are serving breakfast to their moms and to their sisters. So this is one of, one of our um, activity where the boys are actually cooking, uh, making rotis for their uh, household. <laughs> one more picture. I think this, this picture has my heart. Um, the girls are actually challenging boys to the football match and just look at the expressions. They're like, you know, do you have the guts to come and take us on? Like, can you, can you just do that? <laughs> so quickly walking through the design elements of the program. We have a teacher who resides within the community. The Sujak Center or the learning space is also within the community. The teacher is teaching three subjects, literacy, numeracy, life skills, for three hours a day, five days a week. The program duration is 15 months, divided into three modules. Each module is five months long. The training and the material is all provided by TCF. The training is an in-person five-day training before starting a new center. So monitoring and evaluation is extremely important for us. Um, flagship has its own structure and own team within the areas, so has partnership. But LLS doesn't have any regional teams. Whatever we do, whatever, however we monitor, it's done with the central head office. So we don't have any regional teams. Um, we have a dashboard which keeps updating every five minutes. All our teachers are logging in attendances and this dashboard, we can, you can open it, you can check it any time of the day. It will tell you how many learners are there, how many centers are active that day and a day before yesterday and the day before yesterday that way. We know that um, what's the unit progress of our, all our centers and who, which are centers are high risk centers, medium risk and um, low risk. So this dashboard gets updated every five minutes. Not manually, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so what's next for Sojag? So this year, um, we are catching up. Flood has hit us really bad. Um, we, Pre-flood, we were at 240 centers. But now we are at 192 centers because 48 of our centers are severely affected by floods. The classes are not being held regularly there. So this year is a catch-up period. So we are doing trainings and evaluations of all our students this year. Next year, we are hoping that we will get back on track. We will, this year actually, yeah, okay. Catch-up ke saath we'll be opening up 100 new centers as well. But our aspiration was to open far more. But Alamia had another plans for us. So, yeah, next year we plan to expand our footprints in provinces other than Pakistan. Let's see how that goes. Other than Sin, sorry. Yes, sorry. So yeah, all, all, all of the work um, and all of the challenges that were presented earlier, just multiply them by them 10 and that's, those are the challenges for LLS program. Because imagine a community where there is no um, signal, 
uh, forget a smartphone. So a normal phone is even inaccessible. So how do you get attendance? How do you monitor the center? That's, I think, monitoring and evaluation Remote monitoring and evaluation is a challenge for us. The other challenge for us is a human resource challenge, which means that training and evaluation right now is done physically by going in, in the community. The program is only scalable if we can shift to a blended model, because every time the team can't go to every location to open up new centers, so it has to shift to a blended model. So these are the most two critical challenges right now for the program and which we are trying to figure out as we progress to scale. So this picture is, so Kanji is a teacher. Kanji, sorry. Kanji belongs to Badin, and the entire community was flooded. Um, as you can see, this is a picture of a highway. You can say, see a highway guardrail over here, the gray one. He's taking a class on the side of the highway. I spoke to Kanji, and I was like, you know, we never told you to take a class. Why did you take a class? He said, I didn't want it, the children to know the misery which is surrounding them. I wanted them to continue of what they were doing pre-floods, because if I would have left them like that, they would have actually understood the magnitude of the uh, misery which is around them. So hats off to Kanji. So we have a repository of 75,000 plus pictures. We are connected with all our teachers on WhatsApp. And we have a live dashboard which anyone can see at any point of time. Um, to see what's happening at all Sujak centers. As I walk off, I have just selected very few shots of our centers. So enjoy. Very cool, but you had the coolest work. <laughs> Thank you so much. I would now like to request Istra Shahab to come and talk about her program called Dastak. She'll be coming and be telling us a story about a teacher. Asalaam Alaikum. So uh, as Mariam said, I'll be narrating a story. So for the next couple of minutes, I'm not Istra. I am actually Nazia from Okara. And I'll be telling you and taking you through the journey of uh, Dastak teacher training program. So um, I am a primary school teacher in a low cost private school. And um, apart from that, I am also a home tutor. And uh, working with kids, um, being around the kids has always been my uh, passion. But during all this time of teaching and connecting with the students, um, I keep on thinking that how can I make my classroom more better? How can I make the learning of the students more impactful? And even though I have a four years of teaching experience, I still feel like that uh, there's a lot that I need to learn. So one fine day, I was just scrolling through the social media. And I find out something which I now call the ray of hope. So I came across to an advertisement. And this advertisement actually uh, made me so curious to know because it actually has a picture of my classroom, the one in the gray. But I was also more curious because it also has the picture of the classroom that I always has inspired for. So I took some time and I decided to learn more about the program and I then got to know a word that says Dastak and they say Dastak a knock to opportunity. 
So this made me re um, actually more excited and I actually enrolled, um, registered um, to the program to find out the more details that what the CERC teacher training is offering to the low cost private school teachers. So it's actually the teacher training program for the low fee private school female teachers that has a duration of six weeks of 36 hours. And interestingly, it is in online classes on Zoom. So wow, I don't have to step out the house after my school. I don't have to take permission from the male in my family that I have to commute and I have to be a better version of myself. And then I got into the more detail and I also find out that this is not just only uh, training, but they're also providing certification by TCF. But very, very important thing that made me decide that yes, finally I will pay 1,000 rupees to get enrolled in this six weeks online training program was the post-training support. So they were committing that they will be uh, putting us into the WhatsApp group named as Sikho Sikhao, which is actually a platform for the teachers where they will be providing continuous learning and support. So I enroll in the program and this 36 hours, six weeks, which I now call that has kind of transformed me a bit. So during these 36 hours, I was actually made go through um, these three modules, classroom management, lesson planning and delivery, and teacher self-development. So I was able to understand the classroom more better. I got to know that how can I be more emotionally intelligent in order to have a better classroom culture. And most importantly, they also give us hands-on training that how can I make my lesson more better, better plan, and how can I evaluate the lesson after I have taught something to the students. But most importantly, they also tell us that how can I be better self-managed? How can I manage my anger? How can I keep all the worries out of the classroom and make the journey, make that six hours, seven hours of the school amazing for the students? And they taught me how to manage the conflict, which happens every now and then in the schools. And most importantly, they also taught us that how we can do a better in terms of communication. So, it's not only me that has kind of impacted from the Sak teacher training online program, but there are 900 plus teachers with the call as mentees over creating a footprint of 61 cities of Pakistan. So, Dastak has a mentee satisfaction uh, and the satisfaction is because the course curriculum they are teaching, they are actually teaching us is very relatable. But most importantly, it is in the language that we understand that is in Urdu. So it's very easy for us to understand and apply those things in the classrooms. And then there's an amazing Dastak support that we get whenever we want to get in touch. Most importantly, they have the amazing mentors, amazing trainers. Um, so they um, recruit the mentors who have a great teaching and learning experience. So they are well experienced and uh, well versed in what they are doing. So that's the actually call their trainers and mentors and also the success partners. So they have 36 mentors all over from Pakistan, but also from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. So this is the beauty of online teacher training program that any mentor can actually deliver those classroom within their uh, flexible and scheduled time. So not only mentee, but also mentors are very satisfied with the program and this graph shows that, that how much our success partners are comfortable and acknowledge the program that the now in cycle five, the retention rate of our mentors is more than 57%. <coughs> 
So this was Nazia, who was actually benefited from the program, but there are lots of hundreds of Nazia who actually find this program very important and very impactful um, for their selves. So over here, I'm going to just leave you with one of the very short poem that has been written by Dastak Menti for Dastak. Suno, ye kaisi Dastak hai, jo shaur ke pardon pa pad rahi hai, jo agahi ke daron ko khol rahi hai, jo nai jahton ko sika rahi hai, jo zehno ko sul ja rahi hai. Ay mere saati, chal ke ud, khol de dar is Dastak par, aur apni soch ko padwaan chada, nai fikro andas ko aage bada. Thank you. Thank you so much, Istra and Nazia. <laughs> um, an announcement. Um, if you have any questions, please write them down and hand them over to Hassan right there. Hassan, if you can please stand up. That's Hassan. Uh, if you have any questions, want to? If you want. So these guys did such an amazing job in the second half post lunch. Please stay on. Uh, that that we've uh, managed to save some time. We have about 10-15 minutes for all the questions uh, for all the sessions that you just saw after lunch. These are all the programs that that we've developed since Strategy 2030 was made and so much enterprise and effort has gone into this, I would just like to invite Rahila, Isra, uh, you know, Vajiha and uh, Amna to please come and uh, answer any questions you might have about any of these programs. We have about 10-15 minutes before tea is served. So, uh, my quick question is that how are these other programs other than the teaching programs funded? Your water filtering program, your agahi program, uh, the out of school children programs, how are those funded and from, you know, how are those monies raised? Uh, we raise funds separately. So, agahi is a ring fence specifically for agahi. The core program support a child support a school cannot be used for agahi. We fund separately. The water program is funded separately, um, uh, Agahi ka, as well as uh, uh, skills training. Ka. We run our own portfolio, <laughs> financial portfolio. I was going to suggest that since we have, like, you, you have for supporting a school, $22,000. Why don't we up that to 22 or 25 or whatever and include these Agai programs? Because they happen at the school mostly. So Agai program, the water filtration program. So, you know, you can increase the cost of the product over there and hopefully get some more benefit out of it. Yes. yes. Thank you. Uh, you know, this uh, Pakistan's, besides other problems, we do not have good teachers. Teachers do not have content knowledge. This Dastak program looks very, very good to me. Is there a way that, you know, and I, I understand it cost 800, 800 rupees to, for, for a teacher to pay. Sorry? 8,000 rupees, okay, 8,000 rupees. 1,000. <laughs> so, so, so can we, can we as TCF, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll discuss with the Arif and uh, Salman, can we raise funds for this program? Because Pakistan needs teachers, period. Is there an is there an answer to that question? Yeah. I have been forced to come on stage. Uh, so, like I said, most of these programs are right now in the pilot stage, and we wanted to share with you because you know you shouldn't just keep on cooking something without sharing with this family what's going on. But um, 
one of the things we want to do is we want to make sure that the program is in the state that we want to scale it before we go out fundraising for it. Today they are being funded, these new strategy 2030 programs are being funded by grants which are project and program specific and they're not gone to, we have not gone to the major sort of um, donors out there or the community outreach. But once we are ready to scale it, absolutely we'll create products out of these and come back to all of you. Yeah, uh, yeah, so I think you've answered my question. It was really towards uh, Amreen and the question related to the FAST uh, uh, FAS program. You mean Rahila? Sorry? Rahila. Uh, sorry, Rahila. <laughs> it is about, uh, sorry, uh, it was uh, regarding the FAST program. And, uh, but you have answered my question. The question really was whether we can offer it to donors, the concept of one building with two primary and a secondary school, obviously it'll be more cost effective than the previous cluster, which we have been selling uh, around right now. Right. So can you, uh, when will that be available is my question really, the FAST project. So I think, I think it's both about it being ready and, and today, Alhamdulillah, we're at a point where I won't name the donor, but we, we have more funds than we are able to fulfill. Uh, the other question that some of us have to answer is, does, do some products end up cannibalizing other products? And to, together, you know, all the country partners and, and all of us have to decide which products to take to specific grantors, specific major donors, and which others to take to chapters and community outreach. Because sometimes when you take some products to community outreach, you won't be able to control how much of the money goes to build and how much continues to sustain the core program. And community outreach today sustains the core program. So uh, some strategic decisions to be made there, but again, uh, all of us should make them together. Uh, well, the the follow-up question would be then, then uh, Mike, strategic, Mike. Oh, sorry. Uh, the follow-up question would be strategically, in your view at this time, are we going, getting away from the cluster program, which we have three primary, two secondaries, to eventually going to, going to uh, the FAST program? Because it, so to not, me, it not kind yet. of makes sense. Not yet. Uh, because we don't have four governments or all the governments signed on to a structure like this. Okay. And that is a big impediment because the need is not just in Sindh. Where, when we are in Sindh, we do try and prioritize a school which will be sustained through government funding rather than through donor dollars. And, but, it, but in Punjab and elsewhere, we can't do that because we have no such contract with the government. Okay. All right. Yeah, we just, we don't want to miss the time slot for tea, so there is... Just a quick question. Gee, yes, Mansoor sir. Yeah. Daniel, I'll come question. back to you. Uh, is the Abe Rehmat program also still in its, you know, pilot stage? No, no, Alhamdulillah. I actually was wondering whether we'd even manage to sustain it, but it's scaling. It is, uh, uh, it's not in the pilot stage at all. No, this is Abe Rehmat. So There's a water program that you're referring to. Yeah. G. G. Just perspective as well. So if there are certain people who would like to donate fairly, like, you know, large amounts of money. G. That would be acceptable. G. And it would go towards the Abir Rahman program. G. Uh, 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 and sorry? And it would go to a... GG, of course. Bilkul, it will go specifically for, for this program, for the water program. Oh. Yeah. Can, yeah, a couple of things. One was uh, to Haji and to yourself. Uh, Amna and Fezan are very good at coming up with proposals for donors who are interested for Abir Ahmed and these community development programs really nicely put together proposals and they have been very successful in getting donor interest. My question to Zia was, uh, Zia, ke, you know the Punjab government used to say that we will not let your students sit for the board exam if you have co-ed in secondary. Now that we have gone to the one board and that board probably does not have that requirement, does that give us a flexibility to have co-ed in secondary? It doesn't because we're still operating in Punjab, but uh, I think that's the short answer and, and Riaz has a much better answer <laughs> to that. But I can take that partly. Sure. There is a board of education and then there is a directorate of education. The directorate of education uh, oversees how schools are run. 
the board oversees the exams. So there are two separate things. This thing about uh, segregation in Punjab is a directorate, uh, under the directorate. Yeah, it generally. relates to our right to so, run a school in Punjab. In Punjab. Thank you. Nothing I, I do, do want to make sure that we, uh, that we pause and Go take ahead. chai. And I want to assure everyone that we will have a much more extensive yes. Q&A session tomorrow, uh, which we can take all of these questions into, right?